Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So um, we're just going to do this like little part two of this little uh, pre-amplifier. Now, as you can see, I've already built it up. And uh, this thing is an absolute pleasure to build. Um, I didn't really notice it yesterday, but all these carbon resistors have got this nice glossy coat over them. It makes them feel like they're quality. And um, like I say, it's an absolute pleasure to build. You know, I've gone along, I've been anal about it, all the resistors are in the correct way, so you read them from the top down on each of the bands. All the uh, capacitors are in the, the same way round, apart from the electrolytics, that have to be polarised the way that they need to go. Um, and yeah, pleasure to build, absolute pleasure. So, enough of that. I've got it connected up um, over here, if I can just adjust there. I'm using the... Um, Excuse me. I'm using this uh, LM1875. Both of them kind of connected up to this here uh, heatsink. Now the wiring may look a bit convoluted here. You can see all these these wires here, but really, you know, once you understand what they're doing, it's pretty much simple enough. So I just show you what I've got going on over here. Just adjust that. Oh, all right. So again, because we've got a uh, we've got a positive and we've got a negative, and then we need a central point, and that's where these two cables get joined together. Now there's two coming out the top, two coming from here because we've got two two different amplifiers, and they don't like to be daisy chained. You could possibly daisy chain stuff, but I don't like daisy chain stuff. I prefer them to have their own uh, basically star pointing back to the actual power supply rather than hook one up to here and then daisy chain onto the next one there. I don't like doing that. So and that's what you got. So these two come out the top here and they're for the center point here. And then these two are the ones that are coming out the sides. You got come out the sides there. And the same for this coming out of here, this coming out of here. It's for this channel and then the two in the middle, this one here, and this one here. Is for the, the center point, the zero. Um, connections on here, so we've got our left and our right out, going to our left channel, going to our right channel. Oops. So yeah, we've got our left and our right out. So we're gonna make that a little bit brighter. We've got our right channel feed here, which is from here, and the left channel feed here, which is from here. And then we've got our input, which is just going into this little music player. It's nice and simple. This is on, I believe, round about uh, 55, I don't know if you can see that from there, but, uh, 55, which is good enough. And this at the minute is set to zero. Now this gets powered itself. It does say in the destructions, it says to give it a, um, just try and get rid of that light thing. Can I get rid of it? Never mind, I'm gonna have to have it there. Uh, ignore it if you can. It does say give it a 15, zero and 15, but this isn't, this is 12. So I've got a 12, 0 and 12, which is connected up through the transformer, through this block connector. Um, because I didn't know, I just wanted to check everything was going to be okay, it goes over to my variable AC supply. All right, so that's that. Now let's have a little listen to it. All right, so you'll be able to see over there on the, um, on the power supply side of things, on the power supply camera, that, um, let me just see if I can just settle that down. That um, we've got, um, it's looking around about 100 milliamps. And this is because there's two connected now, where before it was around about 50 per channel. So that, that could let's be about right. So let's just turn this up a little bit. It's absolutely lovely. These are set at zeros, so in the middle, as close as I can get them. And uh, I don't, I can't remember if I get away with this. This is Chronos, uh, it's called Lucky Boy, Clever Boy. Uh, I've played it on a few of my flight videos and I think I've been okay with it, so that's why I'm going to use this. I'll give you an indication of how the bass goes now. So I'll turn it about a quarter of the way on. That's about a third probably. And then another third. 
often and full. Yep. I think it's always best to complement the bass and the treble, so that's about a third on. And about a third for the treble. Bit more treble. I always, I always use flat tone anyway. I've always had to think about flat tone in it, or looking at it like that. That's how the artist wanted to give it to you. They'd turn up the bass and everything on there. I don't really have a great deal of anything else I can play that I know that's just going to be okay. But I can tell you now, this little thing sounds lovely. It does sound lovely. I'm not saying that just because I'm the one who's uh, sat here and put it together and I want it to sound nice. I was saying it because it does sound nice. In actual fact, it sounds that nice that once I tested it a little bit earlier, got it all going. I ordered another one because I now I want one for my main amplifier, which is the discrete ones that I built. I do have a complaint about this setup, the way it is. Um, I haven't noticed it before, but I'm gonna share the complaint with you now. And it's this, let me just put that down like that. It's more of a listening thing, this is, but I'm sure you hear it when I do it. That. Hear that noise? And I'll do it again when I put it on. The pop. That. Listen to it again. That. I don't like that. I don't get that with the other amp. Don't get anything like that. Um, Just one of those things, maybe, I think I need to look into how I can get rid of that. It's probably oversaturating the, 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 uh, the microphone here. I'm just wearing the microphone on me as well. I'm not trying to put it in any type of position in front of them. It's just been worn on me, so you get it how I hear it-ish. Okay. I think it's good. I, I quite like it. It's just gonna repeat itself, this thing, so. Hey, see, look, still the same. I've just evened those two up so they've got exactly the same components on them. And, um, and that, yeah, I would say this is a definite, if you're in the market for wanting to buy a kit, uh, a preamp kit, tone and bass control and the volume, yeah, I'd say this. But there are other ones out there. There are other ones out there, and I, I don't know enough about the other ones to say whether they'd be any good or not. Um, but this I'm very happy with. I'm not going to try it full blast or anything like that, because that would be for the power test stuff. Now we can see whether it makes any horrible noises or does anything on the frequency response. Oh, and um, I'm not using the NE5532. Uh, I'm using the, uh, the chip that came with it, the op amp that came with it. Uh, I can't remember what that is, it's a 4558 or something, no I don't think it is, it could be, I can't remember what it is, I can't see it from here, let's have a quick little look again. Uh, was, didn't watch the video, it's the 4580 uh, JRC. Now I don't know if that's Japan Recording Company or something like that, I'm sure I've seen, I'm sure I've seen a JRC, like it's a Japanese Recording Company or something like that. I don't know if that's the same company. Um, but there doesn't seem to be a lot wrong with it. I looked it up on the data sheet, and the data sheet seemed pretty much comparable to the NE5532. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah. But I will change them out when I come to do the, the tests, you know, on the, on, the, on the scope and stuff. I'll then switch them over to have a little look at them. But that's going to take some doing, so. Anyway, that's it. I'll let this, uh, I'll think I'm going to let this just play out wherever it is. It's, uh, is this it? Yeah, clever boy. Oh, sorry, do that instead. So I think I'm just gonna let this run out now and for your pleasure. Mm -hmm.